Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the second video in the series of register-based programming for STM32, and today we will see, how can we use timer to generate the precise delay in micro, and milliseconds. Let's start by creating a project in Kyle IDE. Select your microcontroller here. The only files we need to add, are the CMSYS core, and the device startup files. In my previous video, I covered how to configure the clock, and today I will simply include that header file. We need to add the file here also. You can see the RCC config file have all those functions, that we covered in the first video. With this setup, the system clock would be running at 180 MHz, and this video will basically prove that all that setup was completely fine. We will see more about this in a while. Let's add the main.c file in our project. I am going to include the RCC config file here. Let's also create the main function, and a while loop inside it. Now let's go to timers. As I mentioned, I am going to use timer, to create a precise delay. Here in the reference manual, you can see that we have advanced timers, some general purpose timers and some basic timers. Since we only need the delay, I will use the basic timer for this purpose. I have two basic timers here, timer 6, and timer 7. I am going to use timer 6 for this application. This is the datasheet of F446, and this is the clock diagram. As you can see here, the timer 6 is connected to a PB1 clock, whose core frequency is 45 MHz. Now, this is how my clock is configured. I have covered this in the first video, so if you don't understand, see that one first. Here I am using the external 8 MHz crystal to generate a system clock of 180 MHz. Now, if you notice here, the APB1 timer clock is running at 90 MHz. So I need to divide this 90 MHz, in order to get the required delay. Let's create a function for timer configuration. These are the steps, that we are going to follow. First, enable the timer peripheral clock. Then set the prescaler, and the ARR register. And finally enable the timer. Let's start with the first step. In order to enable the peripheral clocks, we need to modify the RCC registers. RCC peripheral clock enable register have a bit, to control the timer 6 clock. If you are using any other timer, it might be present in a PB2 register also. Here we need to write a 1 to the 4th bit of APB1 ENR. That's exactly what we are going to do. Now, it's time to set up the prescaler, and the ARR. If you remember, the APB1 clock is at 90 MHz. 
If I divide it by 90, the clock will come to 1 MHz. A 1 MHz clock means, each count by the counter will take 1 microsecond, and this way we can get the delay in microsecond. To set the prescaler, we will look in the timer 6 registers. Here we have the prescaler register, where we can directly input the value. This is the auto reload register, which is basically the maximum counts, the counter can have. Also note that, a 1 will be added to the prescaler value, that we will enter. So we will subtract 1 from the actual value. Let's enter the prescaler now. I want to write 90, but because of that 1 being added, I am writing 90 minus 1. Provide the maximum ARR value, so the counter can have a higher limit for the count. Now the final step is to enable the timer. To do so, we will look into the timer control register. Setting the bit zero of this register, enables the counter. So let's set the bit zero of timer six, CR1 register. We also need to wait for the update flag to set. Let's take a look at the timer status register. Here, we only have one bit, UIF, and this bit is set, whenever the registers are updated. So, we will wait for this bit to set. This completes the timer configuration. Now let's create a function to create microsecond delay. Here, we will first set the counter to zero, and then wait for the counter to reach the entered time. As each count by the counter takes one microsecond, we will get the desired time delay. Timer six have a count register, where the counts are stored. We will first set the counter to zero, and then wait for it to reach the given value. This waiting is in the blocking mode, and hence we will get the delay. Let's write another function for the milliseconds. Here, we will just call the delay for 1000 microseconds, to achieve 1 millisecond delay time. Now, let's configure the GPIO clock. I am using pin PA5 as the output for LED. Here are the steps required to configure the GPIO pin. Let's start with enabling the clock. Again we need to look into the RCC registers. This time the AHB1 peripheral clock enable register. Here you can see, the GPIOA clock can be enabled by setting the bit zero of this registers. So we will set the bit zero of the RCC AHB1 EN registers. Next. We need to set the pin PA5 as output. To do so, we will take a look at the GPIO registers. GPIO mode register is used to set the different functions for the pin. Here we want to set it as output. Bits 0 and 1 configures the pin 0, bits 2 and 3 for pin 1, 
bits 4 and 5 for pin 2 and similarly, bits 30 and 31 for pin 15. I want to set the pin PA5, so I have to modify bits 10, and 11. So basically, we need to write a 0, in the 11th position, and a 1, in the 10th position. I will just write a 1, in the 10th bit, as the 11th bit is 0 by default. Next, configure the output mode. Let's go back to the registers. We have port output type register. Here we need to set, what type of output we want. For toggling the pin, we want the push-pull type, and that's why we need to write 0, in the 5th position. In the GPIOA, O type register, write a 0 in the 5th position. Next, we need to select the speed of the pin. We can work with even low speed here, but I just want to explain, how can we use higher speed for the pin. Here also, two bits are configured for a single pin. I want to select the fast speed, so I need to write a 1 in the 11th position, and a 0 in the 10th position. So, I will just write a 1 in the 11th position, as the others are anyway 0. Next is the pull up, or pull down selection. We don't want any of it, since we are going to toggle the pin. So we need to write zeros, in 10th and 11th positions. I don't need to write these zeros, since that's the reset state of the register, but I want to show you, how can we write zeros in more than one position, at the same time. So either you can write a zero in the 10th position, and 11th position, separately. Or you can first write a one in both the positions, and then negate the entire statement. So this completes our GPIO configuration. Now let's write the main function. First of all, call the system clock configuration. Then, the timer configuration, and GPIO configuration. Now in the while loop, first of all, I will set the pin PA5. To do so, we need to look into the BSRR, register. This register consists of two halves. The upper bits are used to reset the pin, and the lower bits are used to set the pin. In order to set the fifth pin, we need to write a 1 in the fifth position, and in order to reset it, we need to write a 1 in the 21st position. Let's set the pin PA5 first. Give a delay of 1 second. Reset the pin PA5. I prefer using this method to reset, instead of writing a 1, in the 21st position. Give the delay again. And that's all. Let's build the code. We have no errors here. Before flashing it, go to the options, type in your clock frequency here. Mine is running at 180 MHz. Go to Debug, select the SD link. Go to Setting, select Connect under Reset, and select Reset and Run. Let's load the program into the board now. As you can see here, the LED is blinking every second. You can time the blinking with the video time also.
we have a perfect one second delay. Let's change the delay time to 500 milliseconds. Build, and flash again. Now the LED is blinking every 500 milliseconds. Let's change it to 250 milliseconds. Build, and flash again. You can see the results. Basically, this proves that whatever clock setup we did in the previous video, was correct. Since I programmed the timer based on those frequencies, so if there was some error in the clock setup, we wouldn't have got the exact delay, like we did get. This is it for this video. I hope things were very clear. We can use this delay for our upcoming tutorials, where again I will simply include this file. You can download the code from the link in the description. In the next video, I will cover the basic UART sending, and receiving. Goodbye for now. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.